Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. So we got Chucky's truck still here in the shop. Um, on this episode, we're gonna be trying to do, uh, focus more on the wiring on this part. So you see we've got the engine in, we've got most of the big bulky stuff in, so we're ready to start getting that wiring hooked up and start linking up with this engine and the ignition, see if we can fire this baby off. So uh, we've got a big pile of wiring over there. I'm gonna show you guys how I do it, many different ways to do this. You might wanna be careful, follow my instructions, we might burn your truck down, who knows? Hopefully not, but uh, yeah, so, uh, we're going to turn the camera around, get all our wiring laid out on the floor how I like to do it, and we're just going to start going over it. All right, let's get our little section cleaned up since we're going to be in here sitting on the floor all day. We're just going to hit this floor up real quick with the old Swiffer 6000. All right, to start this process, you're always going to want to start with the big old jumbled up pile of wires. Let's see what we're gonna do first. This is the part that goes under the hood. So I don't know if we should start with this first. There's not really much stuff to dissect on this part. This is the part that goes um, on the front clip of the Crown Vic, and this is gonna go through the front clip and the front end on your truck. We're gonna narrow this down a little bit, but there's not too much stuff we're gonna thin out of this. We're gonna use a lot of this part, so we're just gonna set it to the side, and we'll jump back to this part later. Okay, these are just a couple wires that he had bypassing his, uh, someone was up the AC and it's having to run off a toggle switch, so we had this ran to the toggle switch. We may have to wire this back up if we can't figure out the issue. So we're gonna set this to the side also. Um, Hopefully your guys' is, uh, AC and all your buttons and stuff work and you won't need a toggle switch, but if you do, we're going to hook that back up. It looks like this is the big one that goes inside the car all the way back to the tail lights. This is probably what we're going to work on today. Drop it down to the floor. Get this dash out of our way too. Golly, this thing's heavy. Alright, yeah, this is the big chunk that goes inside the car. We're not going to need almost 90% of this stuff right here. Yours may look a little different because if this is your first time, I recommend that you blue tape every little plug that you unhook and then you go from there. I've done this a couple times so I knew exactly where to cut on some stuff and what to save. There's going to be big uh, chunks like this that I've already cut out of mine. This one was probably going into like the driver door or something. I knew we weren't going to need any of that stuff, so I just cut it in one big old thing with, instead of dissecting that whole driver door and uh, labeling all that crap and getting it out. If you want to save some of that stuff, you can. If not, just go to that little thing at the driver door, cut that big chunk right there. Um, let's see, there's going to be some other spots too, like possibly, let's look around. I know that the, um, the wire that went under the driver's seat, I went ahead and just cut that because we're not going to have power seats. We're not gonna have any of that stuff. So if you see something like that, that's probably good that also. All right, I like to lay it out in the floor, kind of like it is in the vehicle, in like a rectangle shape. This is the front, that's the rear, driver's side, passenger side, makes it pretty easy. Okay, so this little piece of tape here says that this these plugs went to the passenger side kick plate. So on the kick plate of the Crown Vic over there on the passenger side, there were like three plugs that are like screwed in or on a little plastic piece over there. That's what these three go to. Um, I labeled that. This right here looks like it actually was the rest of the wiring that went down the whole entire passenger side of the, the Crown Vic. You're not going to need any of that stuff. That goes back to like your, um, your rear glass defrost. Um, it goes to some of your lights in the ceiling. It goes to uh, your passenger seat your passenger door, your back door, just a bunch of almost everything on the whole passenger side you don't need. So I cut that. We're gonna start with that right here. Looks like this is one of our main plugs that go, um, I think one of the wires from the firewall come through and go into this main one here. But anyway, we're gonna set it up like that. So this goes to our passenger side. This was our lighting control module. To the front, this is our brake pedal. This says brake pedal. So we know it's gonna continue and be up here on the front like that. Just keep on untangling this stuff here. 
And Bob, as you can see, mine's actually already pretty narrowed down. Yours is probably not going to look like this um, if you keep everything because this is going to strip and it's going to run all the way down the side like this one. And it's going to have a bunch of stuff hooked up to it. Um, but I recommend, if you want to follow my instructions, go ahead and just cut them off like that. All right, this right here, keep up with this one. When you're taking apart your Crown Vic, on top of the transmission mount or transmission hump in the floorboard, there's going to be a little module there, kind of up, up under the dash a little bit. These are going to be plugged into it. I've got that labeled with the, uh, the module on the transmission hump. We're going to keep that. It's going to, it kind of goes like that. This would have ran under your, um, your carpet and under your driver's seat over to that. All right, just trying to figure out some of this stuff. I think this looks like this would have went, I think this one went over to um, on the pillar right there in between your driver and your back door where your seat belt, there's like a little seat belt thing right there and an airbag thing. You got a couple plugs that plug into that. Um, I just snipped all that crap off. We don't have no seat belts, no airbags. So that's what this went to. This big cut spot right here went to the driver door. I cut all that stuff out already. I'm not sure what the heck these plugs went to. I probably should have labeled them. Shoot, I don't know. We'll figure those out. I recommend labeling all your stuff, especially if this is your first time, second time, maybe even the third time, labeling everything. Um, I've done it a few times. I don't label everything. Sometimes I still kind of forget what it is. But once you get towards the end and you start plugging stuff in, everything kind of falls back into place where it was. And most of these plugs will only plug into one thing. So if they don't plug into something, you know what I'm saying? It's only gonna plug into its male and its female thing. It's not gonna let you plug into something else and blow a fuse or something. So if it ain't fitting, that ain't where it goes. Moving on back to the, uh, to the rear portion of this wiring, this would be, if you're in the vehicle like this, this would be your front. This is your rear back here, driver's side. Now all these wiring coming down here, most of this goes to your fuel stuff and then also to your, um, to your back tail lights. This is gonna come back and it's gonna go to your driver tail light and it's gonna run over. And there's a little piece that goes to your EVAP thing. It's uh, where your spare tire is in your trunk. I don't know if that sun's messing up the view, but it's where the spare tire is in the trunk. There's like a little rubber plug and it goes down and right under the trunk metal is your little EVAP box. So you're gonna have a wiring that runs over to that and then it's gonna go over to your tail light, your uh, passenger side tail light. Also in that little loom, you're gonna have a wire that comes up and goes to your, um, I think it's an inertia switch or whatever, your rollover switch. There's like a little button in there. You click and it uh, trips your fuel pump, I think. So I actually just canceled that thing out. I saved the plug and I got it labeled, but all I do is just cut the wires to that thing, twist them together, tape it up real damn good. And you don't, you don't even need that switch or have to mount that. You can just hide that away in your, in your wiring. And there's a couple other plugs in there too. I think there's a plug that goes to the gas door to pop it. You don't need none of that crap. I cut most of that stuff out or, yeah, I cut most of that stuff out. So we're gonna stretch this out now and start eliminating. But really what I do is I get it all laid out like this and then I'm gonna start on the back and I'll just work my way up that way and narrow all this down. We're only gonna keep, I'm not gonna keep the evap canister. I don't need that. Um, it, every time I hook it up, it ends up coming up with the check engine light for it anyway, so I'm not gonna waste my time with it this time. We're just gonna take that wiring out. And it's, um, let's see, also in this wiring right here, there is a, uh, a wire that comes and it's gonna kind of run up the back of the back of the seat and into a hole at the back of the trunk up towards the back seat that drops down, that goes into your fuel tank. And that's for your fuel pump and all that stuff. So that's in here too. We definitely want to keep that. And there's also like a fuel pump module that plugs up. We're going to need to keep that plug too. But everything else, unless you're keeping your tail lights, we're running all the stock wiring on this. If you're going to want to run the wiring and all that crap from the Crown Vic, you can keep up with your stuff. I'm not going to. But if you're going to, do the same thing I'm doing. Just don't cut your tail lights and all that stuff. Just strip everything else down rewrap it back up so all right i'm gonna lay this out and i'm just gonna um start untaping some stuff and eliminating what we don't need okay so i just noticed when i picked this up that actually this one in the last car that i did um were the same okay get it buddy somebody likes to buy tires um so 
This one is the one that goes to your fuel pump cutoff switch, your inertia switch, your fuel pump module, your fuel tank, and all that stuff. Uh, so some of the ones I've done, this is actually all attached with this right here in this, in this wire loom. So you'll run those together. I just realized when I was picking this one up that it's um, detached, it's separate. Uh, I think Corey's truck was like that too. So actually most of this wiring deals with all your fuel stuff. This piece is gonna run up and it's gonna plug into, all right, you know I told you on the passenger side kick plate there was three plugs over there. There's the same thing on the driver side. Um, I think these two plugs right here go into it. This actually plugs into one of them. And one of the other plugs comes off the dash. It's gonna go there for a total of three plugs. And I think uh, the wiring from the engine area comes through the firewall, plugs into one of those, and then two, maybe two of those, and then this one plugs into the fuel. But we'll set this to the side. We don't need to mess with that right now, which makes it even easier. Narrow this down even more. So as we follow this down, man, it don't look like we need, <laughs> don't look like we're going to use any of this stuff for me because I'm not using my tail lights and stuff from the Crown Vic. So I've already snipped the wiring that goes to the tail lights. It looks like. I don't know what the heck this is. I snipped it. Obviously, I don't need it. It looks like if we get back to right here, this is your rear wheel speed sensor. It's going to kind of go under your seat in the Crown Vic. I don't know if you remember when you were tearing it apart, but your rear seat, when you popped it up, there's a wire that was running through the floor. That was this. This is to your rear wheel speed sensor. We're not going to be using that. We'll eliminate that. Keep on coming up. Uh, what we got here? Let's see. So it's looking like so far, this entire big chunk right here, um, if I'm right, we're not gonna need any of this stuff right here that's running all the way back. So just to help us, we're gonna go ahead and cut these. Okay, we got this whole chunk out of the way. That eliminated all the stuff going to the rear down here. All right, and uh, so I like to uh, do a little at a time instead of undoing all this and having a, a bunch of junk everywhere and getting overwhelmed with it. I leave it like this, and by no, like if you're going to keep your tail lights, but you wanted to eliminate some other stuff, don't unwrap this whole dang thing and have wires everywhere. Just start at the end, unwrap all the way up to this front, and then as you get a little chunk, cut those wires out, set them to the side, and clean up your area. The more organized it is, the easier it is to do this because this is kind of a not really an aggravating job to do, but just you don't want to get overwhelmed with a bunch of stuff, especially if it's your first couple times. So yeah, just untape it a little section at a time, cut a chunk like this, set it to the side. Like now that we got this going into here, um, I'm gonna unwrap this and see where this goes and eliminate it. So a lot of this crap could be running into this door right here. So you're gonna have a pile of wires that just went to nothing. Okay, uh, let's see. I know we're gonna keep this because this goes to that module on the trans hump, but I just wanna unwrap it here at this little joint. All right, so I'm just gonna keep on cutting stuff, man. I'm just gonna keep on cutting stuff that ain't attached to nothing. So as I unhooked this little joint right here and noticed these wires from here that were underneath this running to the back, we don't need those because they're already cut there. So I'm gonna hit snip them, working my way a little at a time, working my way up. Instead of having big long piles of wires, just sliding them all around all over the place. We can cut those out now. I'm not worried that I'm gonna mess up anything because this big chunk was running to this big chunk that went to nothing. All right, now I'm gonna sit down. Now from this trans hump plug that we're gonna be using, there are a few wires that's running from this that's going back into this stuff that went to nothing. I'm pretty sure we can just cut all that out because it's going to nothing. So we're gonna cut those, take that, throw it to the side. Now, you got a couple different options here. You can, um, you can untape every bit of this right here and trace these back all the way back to that um, plug and you can depend them and totally eliminate the whole entire wire. But I've learned after doing this several times, it's a lot of extra freaking work that you don't have to do unless you just want it to be super duper clean. Either way, you're gonna have a wire running anyways with stuff, so you're just doing a lot of extra work untaping everything, depending all those wires just to tape everything back up. It's already pretty solid and wrapped up good from the factory. So all I'm going to do is we are just going to, um, all these little ends, we're going to snip them up real good cat, and uh, just tape them up real good. And then we're going to tape them up in this loom like this and just make them disappear. So it's like they're not even hooked up to anything. Just make sure you tape them up real good so that they don't get in there and arc on anything else or end up taping. Uh, don't tape them together either in a big chunk. You want to tape the ends up individually so that way 
they're not touching each other and you're going to blow a fuse or anything. So tape up the tip. I just take a little piece of tape and just wrap it around that tip right there on each individual one. And then I get them together, tape them up real good, and then just tape them together and that loom, make them disappear. I like to just cut all these little uh, plastic clips off too that were from the factory. Just kind of cleans it up a little bit. Those, I think, popped into the floorboard. There's a little hole where those just pushed in. Okay, so I'm just going to start doing some boring stuff and I'm taping this back a little at a time. I'm probably just going to work myself back to this big chunk that went into the driver's door. Tape myself back up to right here because a lot of these wires coming through here are going to be eliminated and I'll show you guys. We just want to get all this tape right here out of the way. All right, we've got most of this wiring stripped down now. And we can start, you'll start seeing this fall apart now. A lot of these, if you grab most of this stuff that we cut out, it's going up here to this door and stuff. And we'll be able to start pulling these out like this. Like spaghetti noodles falling out of there. See all these wires that are coming out? Just set them to the side like this. Throw them away. Okay, one thing I do watch for while doing this is ground wires. You don't want to snip those out. They're pretty much always going to have a little ground head on it like this. These are easy to determine what they go to and what they are. Golly, that thing is tangled the heck up. Get out of there. All right, so you don't want to snip none of these right here. If you got any hooks on wires like that, that's going to be a ground. Don't snip it. It's running into that control module, so that's probably going to be the ground for that thing. So we don't want to snip that one. We'll make sure we set it to the side. And you can see here's going to be another one right here. Anything you see like that's going to be a ground. And then sometimes these are going to have, see how this has two? Sometimes this will go up in there and then it might have a connector in there and it might split to three. So just always make sure that you backtrack to your, to your ground to make sure that if that ground was connected to something, you left one still connected. Okay, so we're just going to keep on working our way back. This is still the chunk that went to the driver door. Now there's a lot of, it goes up in there and disappears into stuff. So we're going to continue cutting this on back. And honestly, guys, you could stop here. I have before. Um, if you just wanted to just clean up your ends right here and all these loose pieces that are hanging around, clean them all up and do like the other end. Tape up these ends real good. Tape them up real nice and just disappear them into the loom. Because this wiring is going to be here anyway. You can thin it down all you want and maybe make it half the size of that, but you still gotta run the wiring behind the dash. You're still gonna have all this stuff. It's gonna run back this far anyways, cause this has to go to your trans module. Um, so all this stuff's gonna be here anyways, and it kinda needs to be in this location. This needs to be up right here because it's near that driver's side kick plate that you're gonna need to plug back in. All that stuff falls back into position um, of plugging back in the stuff that, that went in there. But, uh, to help you guys with the video, I'm actually going to cut all this stuff down and narrow it all the way down because on that passenger side over there, I mean, there's probably 20 or 30 wires that we're going to be able to eliminate from this. So, yeah, we'll make it more thinner of a wire loom, but there's still going to be wiring there. So, just depends on how you want to do your project. If you just, if you don't really want to fight all this stuff. And I've done that in the past and it works just fine. You know, just tape everything up, stuff it all in there, and uh, it'll work just like that. But for the sake of cleaning it up and thinning this thing down, we're gonna keep on trucking, keep on cutting tape, and working our way down. Right about now is about the time that you're gonna be getting sticky as heck. All that tape stickiness is starting to settle, settle in. Golly, man, it's a nasty mess. That's the worst part of this wiring, you know? I'm not too worried about the wiringness part of it because after you do this a couple times, you'll see um, it's really not that hard. Just very sticky and messy. I think that any one of you dudes can do this. You don't have to be an electrical genius to do this right here. Um, I'm not smart with electrical at all. It's just use a little bit of common sense, you know? Don't cut a ground wire. But as you see, we're working up. We got this big gem of wires right here. You know, it's we're, we're going to grab all those in a minute, pull them on back, and snip them again. That way, we're keeping 
keeping everything that we don't need out of the way. All right, we made it back a little further. Let's just go ahead. These are all the ones from the driver door. Just kind of take them, work them back to your current spot. All right, see what I'm talking about here? There is a, there's one power wire that went back and then it joined into three and split off to other stuff back there. So you're gonna have some spots in here with grounds like that. You're gonna, um, you're gonna end up not knowing what you're doing and cutting a black wire and then it's gonna go off to three other grounds in there and you're gonna cut grounds to everything. So anything that is a black wire, just keep up with, pay attention to, and make sure it doesn't have one of those little eye hooks on it. But this right here, uh, I don't know what the heck it was going back to, but we don't need it. So we're gonna cut it out like that. We've got a big old group right here so far that we've pulled back. We're gonna go ahead and clean this up and get this mess out of the way. All right, before I get too far ahead and start overwhelming myself, I like to backtrack a little, go ahead and start cleaning this section back up and then work. I work little portions at a time. You can do it however you want, man, but that's how it keeps me from getting overwhelmed with stuff. So I, as you can see, I've already started cleaning this back up here. Got it taped back up, looking good all the way back up. We've already taken all the stuff we didn't need that comes from this way and it's already cut back and it's cut right there. So everything back right here is gonna need to stay. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this back up and tape all this up and clean it up right here. Um, one thing I do like to do, so say you're gonna tape off all these right here. All right, I don't like to cut them all at one length. So say you just take your snips and snip them all at one length. By the time you tape up each individual, one of these wires on the end, you're gonna have a big knot of, um, electrical wire just you know from wrapping around those so i like to do them in different lengths so maybe cut two or three here cut two or three there two or three there that way as you go down it'll keep it kind of nice and tight and won't be uh one big jumble of uh just electrical tape where you taped everything up in one section so yeah let's go ahead and tape all this back up and get it cleaned back up to this section and then all that'll be done all right we've got that whole section trimmed down and taped back up looking good that's as thin as we're going to get it right there I hope I was able to help you through that portion of the section. Um, so if you're worried about cutting into a ground, just I don't know if yours is going to be the exact same as mine. But from my experience on this section that I did, it looked like there was not a single ground wire that you would cut into and mess up anything except for coming out of this where the trans, uh, that little module that was on the transmission hump right there. I'm not sure what the heck that thing is. That's just what I'm going to keep calling it. The little module that's on your transmission hump inside the car. Coming from it, there were some grounds that had an eye on it like this. And they ran into here. But from there, there was no other grounds on that. Uh, everything else, I was able to cut everything out. So don't worry about cutting any grounds on that. As long as you keep up with that one, it should be good. Here's all the extra wires we got left. I don't know how big of a pile that looks like to you, but man, she's huge. That is a big pile of wires there. See the pile of wires? And then that's what we've got left. We took out more than we kept. But all right, now we're gonna wrap this up and set it to the side because we finished up this section. I think the next section we're gonna do is um, probably jump into this fuel side right here. And there's not too many things we need to eliminate from that, but I still wanna go through it with you guys and just see see what's up with it. Okay, for the fuel side of the harness that comes out, we're gonna lay it again, just like it's in the car. Up here's the driver's side, back here's the rear. The, or uh, front, that's the front, this is the rear, that's the driver's side. So all these wiring ran along the driver's side like that. This plugs in to, uh, I think something into the dash or somewhere along that kick plate up there. We'll figure that out later. Not important right now, but that's where that's gonna plug in. Okay, it comes all the way back and then it goes into this piece right here. That's the part that goes into your fuel tank. That's gonna go to your fuel tank. That's for your fuel pump right there. Okay, we're gonna come on back and we're gonna come to these two things. Now this one is your rollover switch, that inertia switch in your trunk with a little red button. Now all I'm gonna do is just cut these two wires, twist them together, and then tape them up and make them disappear in there. And that thing's gonna be, it'll be good. It'll be just on all the time, you know what I'm saying? Not your fuel pump or anything, it's just, it's so if you, if you roll over the truck, it'll trigger that switch so that way fuel doesn't go everywhere. And when you roll back over, you hit the button. Um, you can keep it if you want to. I never keep it. It's just a big little thing. You got to 
screw to the side, it's ugly, we get rid of it. All right, this right here goes to your fuel pump module. Now in the Crown Vic, in the trunk on this side, there's a little module that that plugged into. We're gonna need to keep this wiring here. That's gonna go to that module. And then so from here, this part that comes along there, um, it comes over this, I cut this off, this went into your driver's side tail light. We're gonna come to the middle. We've got a ground. This went in where your spare tire was, that little plug I was telling you that goes down to the EVAP canister under your trunk right there. I cut it, we're not gonna use that. And this came on over to the passenger side tail light. Not gonna use that. So I'm gonna untape all this crap right here because none of this are we gonna use, but we do probably need to keep up with that ground wire. Not 100% sure, but we'll keep an eye on it and track it back, see where it goes. Um, like I said, we're gonna eliminate that one so that doesn't matter, but this plug here is all we're gonna have left back here in the back. And we don't need it to go that far in the back because our fuel tank's gonna be, we don't know where it's gonna be. So we're gonna unwrap this right here all the way back. Oh, actually, no, that goes to that fuel pump uh, module, sorry. We're gonna put that in the cab. So actually that needs to come all the way back up and be somewhere in here on that wire loom. So that way we can put it in the cab. And, uh, the fuel tank can be back there. That's fine for it to be back there. So we'll unwrap this stuff all the way up right here. And uh, yeah, just try to get this plug to the fuel pump module up in there and eliminate all the other crap we don't need. Hey, there's my pretty Kathy. Yeah, I'm not coming. Is that rolling? Yep. There's Kathy. No, it ain't. No, it is. No. You better say hi. Be involved in the camera. No. You better no. cut it out. No, come here. No. People like you in the camera. You're so funny. I told you it was rolling. Oh, my God. Yeah. Please cut that out. Why? No. We got a visitor today. Kathy stopped in the shop to see us. She's running over there to hide. It's lunchtime. She's hidden in over there. Kathy, give us a little thumbs up. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. She'll like being on camera. Okay, camera's off. Let's go for lunch. You have to delete that one too. Just joking, camera's still on. Nah, I got you. All right, I've almost got this fuel section narrowed down. Got some more wires cut out of it. I'm just taping it all back together now. Kind of rearranging it like I told you. We're gonna leave the, uh, the plug that goes to the fuel pump and the tank further to the back and the ones with the, uh, to that fuel pump module, that we're, gonna go, we're gonna put that inside the cab. We're kind of routed it back up and I'll show you when I get everything laid back out. Sorry for the racket in the background. That's Ian back here making a ruckus. His wheel bearings that went out on his truck. So we had to push out Chucky's old yellow truck. It's out there in the parking lot. Ian's in here doing some wheel bearings today. To his old truck. Here's the one that was on there. Sounds like crap, listen. I don't know if you could hear that, but you could definitely hear, hear Ian coming down the road about a mile and a half down the road. Sounded awful. Did you get that one off? Yep. Awesome. Got both of those. He's changing those out today. His sway bar links. Look at this thing. Completely broken. He's, he's been out. Uh, he's been out raising a little bit of heck in his truck. A little bit of mudding. And I think he's been jumping it. Look right there where he's been rubbing that I'll coil. Jump some stuff and show you jump. He's definitely been jumping it. Gosh, this one was awful. Listen to this. That was definitely the bad one. Look down in there at that junk. Holy crap, I told you we could hear him coming down the road. Man, that thing is so gritty. All right, we got to wait on those parts to come in tomorrow for him to finish that up. But yeah, broke his, uh, broke his sway bar link jumping, doing burnouts and stuff out here in the parking lot. We had to do his rear end fluid today. He was pretty low on that and had a little leak. So we took care of that. What else we do today, Ian? Did an oil change. What else did we do? Look at this face. Look at that dirty face. Uh -huh. Look, you don't see Ian like that a, too often. Look at that dirty face. I think we just did an oil change and... Look at them arms. Yep. All right, well, cool. Yep, so if you hear any banging in the background, that'll be Ian for the rest of the evening while I finish up this wiring. Once I get that finished taped up, you see my roll of tape there, and when I finish that up, I'll lay it back out and show you kind of how it's going to be in the truck, and then we'll be done with that section. We'll move on to probably tearing out everything in the dash and start narrowing it down. 
Okay, so your fuel line section can look similar to this. This is the part that's going to go to the rear, plug into the tank. Um, this is going to, I usually run this under the seat. That transmission hump module and the fuel pump module are both going to go underneath the seat. Once we put the carpet back down, I'll set those down. We'll screw those into place and we'll ha have all this ran to that, but that's later on. So, but yeah, this is going to go under the seat. That section there is just going to kind of run under the carpet and up and under the dash. And it's going to plug in over on the driver's side somewhere to one of those plugs. So now that we've got that part finished up, we're just going to roll that up, set it to the side with the other one. And now we're going to pull the dash over and dissect all the wiring out of it. Also, I want to point out that this is just a quick way to do this. Um, I'm not doing a little extra stuff. So for you, you may want to, like this doesn't need to be that long to go from under the seat up to the dash in our trucks. You know, that wire is really long. So if you wanted to, um, you could snip those, shorten that and bring that up closer. There's like 13 wires if you wanted to do that. So I'm just going to kind of coil that up, up under the carpet a little bit and under the dash a little bit so that way it can be like that. But you can shorten yours if you want to. Also on this end, uh, I think we're just going to put the gas tank in the bed again and that gives us enough length to do what we need to do to go what we're going to do and back into the bed for our gas tank. You may want to cut that and extend that and run it back to your tank or whatever you're doing. But I'm just showing you guys how to get this narrowed down kind of the way that I do it to work for me. All right, so there's a whole bunch of stuff we gotta get out of the way first to get this wiring. It's behind all this uh, ducting and some other stuff. So this is a seven millimeters, what I use. Might not be the exact size, but seven millimeter fits it. We'll zip all these out. Make sure we drop all these little screws all out into the driveway or into the shop. So that way I leaf blow them into the driveway and flatten all my tires. And this doesn't take that long. There's only like 6,000 of these screws. Okay, I think we've got everything detached. We'll try to wiggle everything out. No, yep. Okay, we are done with this dash now. Unless any of you guys want it. You want this? No? Alright. I'm going to toss it to the side then. Alright, so we've got all of our wiring that goes into the dash here. It's laid out just like it, you would see it in the dash if you were in here driving. It's like this. Now, there's several things in this that we're not going to need. And man, if you want to, you go ahead, man. You go ahead, you dig through all this and dissect that wiring down and deep in it if you want to. I'm not going to go through all that crap. I've done that once before. It is a freaking nightmare. Uh, it's okay just to leave it like this and cram it all into your dash if you want to. But uh, hey, you're not cramming nothing into my dash. So with that being said, there are going to be a few extra plugs up in there that we're not going to need. And it's all right. We're just going to let them dangle in there. So one thing I do recommend to make it a bit easier is all these little, uh, this plastic thing right here. We're going to take that off and anywhere where there's a bunch of raw wiring like this, we're going to tape it up. It's pretty raw under that. We're going to tape it up real good and just make it look better. Um, this, there's like a 90 joint right here. Cut all this out so that way we'll be able to bend it in the dash and move it around the way we need to. This whole piece right here needs to come out. And uh, like I said, guys, if you want to dissect this thing, like the, um, I don't know, we're not going to be using the radio wires, for instance, because we're going to be using the truck radio. So if you wanted to deep pin all that and dissect all that, man, you go for it. Um, also, I rec also, you want to go ahead, if you're going to be using the, uh, the Crown Big gauges, then you're going to want to keep this switch right here in your lighting module box. We put that up there earlier, the light module box, because if you don't keep those, um, whenever you get out of the truck and you turn your key off, your gauge lights are going to stay on like, um, you know, like when you get out of your car and your auto headlights stay on for a little bit, it's going to do that. Your gauge lights stay on for about 10 minutes before they'll cut off. So if you'll just keep that uh, module box and plug it in and cram it up in the dash somewhere and then you plug this in and mount it. That way, even though your truck's going to be running off the stock headlights, you'll have this in there. And at nighttime, you can click this and your gauge lights will come on and then you can turn it off. That way, when you turn off your key, you'll be able to turn that and turn your headlights off and they won't stay on. Also, it's got this little thing for your um, interior light. So if you leave all your floorboard bulbs and stuff in with this wiring and mount them under your dash somewhere, whenever you roll this, they'll click on. So you'll have like an ambient lighting, whatever. 
into your floorboards or you can also run a wire from that into your one that goes into your headliner if that one doesn't work so when you open your door and turn that on and everything all that will come on together so that's something to keep in mind you might want to keep that uh, we got the fuse box there definitely gonna need that, that fuse. okay so yeah that man that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna like I said take all this hard stuff off take everything up make it look good and then once we get it all crammed into the truck, whatever we don't need, we're just going to um, just set, to, set the plug to the side. That way it's not in our way. You can do whatever you want with it. I'm just going to set it to the side up in there. That way we don't disturb anything, disturb any grounds or anything weird. Well, that's pretty much all there was to that. We've got all those plastic pieces out of the way, and I just taped up underneath it and cleaned up anything that didn't look good. So it's just a big uh, jumbled tangle of wires there that we've got to cram all in the dash. But don't worry, it fits. I've done it many times. It actually don't look that bad. Um, most of this stuff kind of goes down. That fuse box goes down into the floor. This stuff goes down onto the firewallish kind of area. That plug and the white one up there goes to your gauges. So, you know, and um, your factory radio plug will be in there. So if we're going to use the one that's going with the truck right now, but if later on you ever wanted to run into that. But we do got our cigar plugs in there. We're going to want to use those to plug into the cigarette lighter there and uh, our AC plugs some of this other stuff we're not going to need and then some of this goes to the firewall on the passenger side and there's one big that one right there with the rubber gasket is going to go through the firewall and i think the only thing it plugs up to is it loops around and plugs into the top of that air box on the outside of the firewall there so that's going to be it on that part we're going to set that part to the side and we've about narrowed down all of our wiring on how we're going to do this sorry guys if you thought that i was going to be um dissecting this way more in detail but it, like there's really not much to do on there is you could dissect a bunch of crap if you wanted to but it's still gonna look like this at the end of the day you could take out maybe 15 or 20 wires um, that go to plugs to make you feel safe and backtrack them all the way back to that fuse panel if you want but it's still gonna look like that behind the dash so save yourself some time and a lot of work and just let it go man um, you can cut off those plugs if you want to clean them up solder them up and tape them into this if you want to do that so there's not a bunch of plugs in there but i'm not even going to do that man then you're going to have a bunch of loose connections in there somewhere that one day something could corrode and uh maybe mess something up so if i just leave the plug on it it's good stuck it in there forget about it man the last section that we have left is this part that goes up in the engine bay area and pretty much we're not going to dissect any of it either a lot of that stuff needs to be plugged up some of it don't um like maybe the crash sensors for the ab or uh for the airbag stuff we're not going to need some of that stuff so but again i'm, I'm going to do it like we did this part that was in the dash we're just going to i'm going to take this hard plastic thing off right here in any of these hard plastic corners and just go over it and clean it up real good and tape it back up this also gives you a good chance to uh just look over your wiring really good as you're taping all this back up because sometimes you might find something that was chafed or corroded or broken and in fact when I was looking through one of the wiring uh, sections we did earlier I noticed there was a little chafed spot there was two wires that were kind of chafed one wasn't broke through all the uh, all the way it was very close but the other one did have wires exposed didn't break the wire but they were exposed so we went ahead and cleaned that up and took care of that but gives you the chance to check over all your wiring real good and just make sure that nothing's scuffed up or chafed up or messed up so that's what I did. I look over it real good whenever I'm doing that and just make sure nothing's exposed. Tape it up real good if it is. Clean it up. So all right, we're going to get this other section over here and get it out of the way. And uh, we'll get that front part set up. Like I said, we're just going to do that. It takes a couple minutes just to get that hard plastic off there. Tape it up. And we're going to wait on Kathy to get here to help us roll the other truck back into the shop because it's kind of tough to do by myself coming up this slope right here. So when she gets here, we're going to roll that thing up in here. And I know I could use the... Uh, the easy tow that's what i do most of the time but i've got the shop full over here and i've got the shop full over here with a bunch of stuff and it's hard to get that thing out right now so i'll just wait she'll be here in a few minutes when she gets here we'll push that thing back up in here and uh probably shut down for the night because it's getting a little late for me uh tomorrow we'll probably start uh getting some of this wiring installed in and i'll probably start with the chunk that goes under the hood we'll get that chunk plugged up everything that goes to the engine we've got to cut a couple holes in the firewall to get some of these plugs that go to the computer and some stuff like that so i'll probably get that one in first and then we'll do this big chunk that goes behind the dash right there and then we'll do the two chunks the one that went to the um 
went to the fuel management stuff and the one over there in the truck that went to heck i don't know oh i don't know what the heck all that stuff went to but whatever we've got another group of wiring over there those two are going to be inside the cab so yeah that's the plan let's uh let's get this chunk over here and get it done all right guys that's going to wrap it up for this video it's getting a little long and boring watching me just tape up some wires but uh it's part of the process and you guys are needing some help with that so hopefully i'm able to help you out just a little bit with this this video really boring video all we did was just sat in the floor and talked about stripping wires the whole time so thanks for watching this part but it's going to lead us into the second part where now that we've got everything thinned down like it needed to be now uh in part two we're going to start assembling everything back into the truck so make sure you join us back for the second part where we get all the wires put back into this thing hopefully get it fired up and make sure she's running all good and smooth as eggs so uh man boring video but if you liked it hit that thumbs up button if you didn't you know hit that thumbs down button and uh thanks for watching the video